With chicken wings planned for dinner tonight, we're going to do the brine this afternoon. That way it has several hours for the brine to soak into the chicken and give it all those flavors that we're looking for. The brine will also give the chicken wing a lot of moisture and the moisture will help keep it juicy during the air frying effect. We're also going to add something closer to the air frying time that's going to give it an extra little crispy crunch. Start with our water, which is always filtered cold water. We're going to start with our basics, of course. All of the measurements here are one half tablespoon to one teaspoon. It's not important because it's not going to be cooked in this, it's just going to be resting in this for a few hours. Salt. Pepper, our basics of course. Then we're going to have some chicken bouillon. After the chicken bouillon, we're going to have some ginger. Garlic powder. Thyme. Dried cilantro. and dill. I'm going to get all those spices all mixed up and hydrated. This is the freezer pack from uh, chicken sections that we've had in the freezer prior to the ones that we just processed on the last video. I'm going to mix that up really good. Look at all those spices in there. Kind of looks like swamp water, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. We're going to seal this up. Burp the air. When we get ready to air fry these wings, we're going to drain them and try to retain as much of the seasoning as we can. Then we're going to add additional elements to it to help it crisp up. And then we're going to air fry them for about, well, I don't know how long, until they're crispy. Just checked the refrigerator and the supplies are a little weak. So I have a jalapeno that is uh, starting to shrivel. And I have three tomatillos that were left over from salsa that I did a, a few days ago. It's time to put these to good use. It's going to be a small batch, but it's going to be a batch of the salsa verde, tomatillo sauce, green sauce, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it my save what's left in the refrigerator before it goes bad sauce. We're going to roast them. Yes, we're going to roast. We're going to put our jalapeno in the pan, a couple of our cloves of garlic. That is not a good sign. That is not a good sign at all. That one's got a little something going on there at the end too. So we rethink this, we could do a roasted tomato, tomatillo sauce, a combination of the two, kind of a red sauce, green sauce, hybrid mix. What do you think? No? Yeah? Yes? No? 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 Yes? 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 No? No? <sighs> yes. So we shaved off the imperfections. We got one really pretty one. Uh, kind of a sad jalapeno, bless its little heart. And three cloves of garlic. So let's toast this in the toaster oven for about maybe 25, 30 minutes. See if we can't get them nice and soft and uh, roasty.
And then we're going to try a new recipe. We're going to try, yeah, we're going to try fire roasted tomatoes. The reason I'm a little excited about, oh, well, hold that. I'll, I'll, I'll let, I'll let that wait until I'm ready to share. And a lot of people leave the stems in when they put it in the salsa. I did that the last time we showed you, but um, I didn't like the results. Mm -mm. We're going to cheat just a little bit. Yes, yes, we're going to cheat. Our fire roasted tomatoes in a can. There's a fire ban going on. So we'll have the fire roasted tomatoes. And let's go ahead and bring this lid blender up. Now there is something that I am going to do that is going to be fantastic. It's going to give you stop. I said I would hold. I said I would wait. I will share that when I'm ready and not before. I keep wanting to I keep wanting to jump the gun. You've seen all of this before. But just as a refresher. We're going to fry a few corn tortillas. One has a special mission. The other is just a special meat. I need a tongue. Fry it nice and crisp. Well, the chicken wings are brining and they'll be brining for another couple of hours. So I was just trying to find something else to do while in the kitchen. And finding the vegetables in the refrigerator that looked like they were on their last leg kind of stimulated the uh, salsa idea. We're going to make two sauces today. We're going to make two, two sauces today. Need this one extra toasty, extra crispy. You'll find out why. Not firm, but extra crispy. Let's just turn this off right now. We're going to use a very small amount of onion. Again, we have a jalapeno that uh, uh, seen its better days. I'm going to step over to the sink. And I ran out of gloves. So, yes, this is going to be fun. I forgot to roast the onion. This other half was supposed to be in there roasting. I don't know how I'm going to edit this so that it makes any sense at all. We'll just see what happens. So what's your consensus? Do you think an older jalapeno like this will be super spicy? Or do you think it'll be boring and mundane and old and washed up and not caring anymore if he has any spice? to his life anymore what do you think do you think he minds being diced up in little tiny morsels to be consumed by whomever or do you think he's lived his best life what do you think is going on with this jalapeno Well, right now he's going into the bowl with the onion. All right, we've got our onion and our jalapeno. We're going to add about half of this cilantro.
Now we have our onion, our jalapeno, and our cilantro. Toast rub is finished. Everything in there is as toasted as it's going to be. You'll notice the mango is flatter, wider. This section right here in the middle is a giant flat seed. So we need to cut around that seed. So we're going to cut the smallest side first. And we're going to go right around the edge of that seed. Which uh, we did not do. Because I cut too close to the center. I was supposed to cut a little bit farther off to the right. Because I want to go down beside the seed. Not to the seed. I want to miss the seed. Boy, this is getting butchered up like you can't believe. There. See, there's your seed that you want to avoid. And there is the meat that you want. So, let's try this other way. See that seed? Look how far down that goes. That's a piece of cilantro. See that seed there? Why didn't we peel it first? No, well, because there's a reason we didn't. I'm cutting too close to the center. I want to cut farther away from the center so that it goes down beside the seed like so. Now we have three pieces. We've got our two sides and then we have our center. The center has got the seed in it. We're going to pull out another knife. Perry knife will be very handy for this. We're going to go in and we're going to cut. I just messed up because I went too far and I cut the skin. Don't want to cut the skin. You want to cut deep enough in to stop before you get to the skin. This was too far. You see that? That's too, too, too far. So we're going to try to salvage that. And of course, the day that I don't have gloves, I could have blood on everything. Right? Right. You see what's happening here? See that? Now we're going to fold that inside out. There's all your mango flesh. Yum, yum, yum. Now, it should be very easy to simply cut that right off the skin. And you have diced mango. Alright, let's try this again. Right on down to the peel, but not through the peel. Ah, right there, just went right through. That's what I get for having a sharp knife. Okay, we're back to our mango jalapeno salsa. In the bowl here, we have our jalapenos, our mango, our sweet onion, and some cilantro. We're going to do just a tiny amount of salt and pepper. That's a, not even an eighth of a teaspoon there. Probably an eighth of a teaspoon here. Just a very tiny amount. Oops. A very tiny amount of cumin.
let's hope that the pineapple gives us that sweetness and a little bit more of that juice that we need. Mm. Pineapple does it. The garlic literally burst right out of its shell. There's a piece of it over there that over roasted, and there's a piece of it there that over roasted. Well, I wasn't paying attention because the garlic takes a very short amount of time to roast. This is what one looks like as it's trying to burst out of its shell. Isn't that the strangest thing? Well, a lesson learned. My roasted garlic is not going to be in this salsa. We're going to go ahead and start our uh, hot salsa now. Not our hot salsa, our roasted salsa. There's a nice roasted tomatillo. Another roasted tomatillo. This is a really mushy one. That onion that didn't get roasted, but eh, it's roasted well enough. I think we should take the seeds out of the jalapeno, so that'll just take us a moment to do that. And there we have our roasted jalapeno. We're going to add our pepper. Again, it's only half a teaspoon. Our salt, which is probably too much, so I didn't put all of that in. And our cumin, which is a very small amount of cumin. Our fire roasted tomatoes with garlic. So, hey, that takes care of the garlic. Okay. This is our hybrid salsa. Tomatillo and fire roasted tomatoes. What could go wrong? A lot if I don't add the final ingredient. I've got to add the final ingredient. Our extra crispy tortilla. Let's just put the whole thing in there. Well, that blender devoured that tortilla just as fast as I can devour one. Wow. The final taste test. Mmm. Wow. It's a salsa verde, basically a green tomatillo sauce, chock full of fire roasted red tomatoes. And it's pretty damn good. Wow. Write this recipe down. Write this recipe down. I never write recipes down, I always forget them. Mmm. I. The time has come to check out the brine. There is our chicken that has been brining for the last, uh, let's see, three hours. You can smell all those spices. Touch the outside of the bowl, it's still quite cold. You can see all these wonderful spices now. That one's going to have a lot.
We're going to take these spices that are here in the strainer, try to pull a few of them out, just enough to flavor the garlic butter sauce. The chicken has been brined. It is filled with all kinds of flavor, but it's also filled with a lot of moisture. I like chicken wings crispy on the outside. So we're going to get rid of some of the outside moisture, but the brining has gone into the meat and the inside will be tender and juicy and just delicious. But the outside will be crispy. We hope. Don't think we need to add any more spices. We're certainly not going to add any salt. But I'm going to show you what we are going to add. We're going to add some baking powder. We're not adding so much baking powder that we're going to get the dry mouth chemical taste. We're adding just enough to put a soft, light dusting on the outside of the chicken. So the chicken will be crispy and crunchy and golden brown with the inside juicy and spicy. I like to alternate the chickens in the fry basket. And I like to put the skin to the top. We're going to fry these in a toaster oven. So we will not be turning them midway. I'll put the thickest part of the uh, drum towards the center, right below the fan. We're going to put these in the air fryer oven for about 20 minutes. We'll check the temperature close to that time and we'll adjust the cooking time accordingly. In the meantime, while these are baking, we'll be making our dipping sauce. We have a little bit of olive oil here in the pan. To that olive oil, we're going to add our butter. We don't want it to get too terribly hot, so we're trying to cook it. We're trying to keep it on a very low flame, and that flame can't be much lower without going out. Oh, like that. Okay, let's get it back rolling. We're going to add the drippings from the brine. That's going to be a lot of seasoning in that, so it's going to be very, very, very strong. You don't have to do this. You can use your very own seasonings if you want. You can tone it down with just maybe some salt, pepper, and garlic. Be done with it. We've added a little bit more butter. What we're doing is cooking some of those spices that were in the brine. We're cooking them in that butter sauce. Here is our diced garlic. Nice chunks. How about something to steer with that doesn't make a lot of noise? Yes. All we've done is we've taken a little bit of olive oil, a lot of butter, we've added the seasonings or the drippings from our brine, and we've added about two ounces of minced garlic. Boy, editing this is gonna be fun. And all we're gonna do is set that off to the side and get it ready. 20 minutes in the air fryer, plenty of time for these particular wings. As we speak. I would like them to look a little bit crispier, wouldn't you? 
They're definitely at the right temperature. I like them a little bit crispier looking, even though we're going to ground them in the butter. Uh, so I'm going to give them about, I'm going to give them three, four minutes in the boil. Are we ready to continue? There we are. Isn't that beautiful? Look how juicy they look. They don't look, look at that. They're not all shriveled up. Isn't that beautiful? That is a beautiful, juicy wing. Mmm, mmm, mmm. You gotta love those juices. Get some garlic sauce all in there. Get it all in there. You're gonna feel that garlic all night long. Yes, you are. But they wouldn't be garlic parmesan without the parmesan. Let's plate this and get ready to ring the dinner bell. We have some shaved parmesan. We're just going to sprinkle there on the top. Okay, let's chow down. No, you're not going to watch me eat wings. I'm entirely too messy. There you are, folks. There's our modified red, green, roasted tomato, tomatillo sauce that we made today. Our mango and pineapple salsa. Those are the chips from the bag, but they're good. They're really good. They're made actually at a, uh, um, a deli. And there are our wings. Yep. And a napkin. The most important thing in eating wings is that napkin. Okay, I said I'm not going to let y'all watch me eat wings, but I want you to see the juice that's coming out of this wing. Mmm, it was delicious. Mm.